From Fox 8 Sports, this is the Overtime Podcast. From the Fox 8 Studios in New Orleans, this is the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. I'm your host, Sean Bazan, riding shotgun as he does each and every podcast is Andre Johnson. Junior. Do not forget the JR at the end of the name. It's very important to remember the junior. Before we get into today's content, be sure to like, share, rate, review. If you are watching us on YouTube, hit that subscribe button. Get the bell notification when we drop that fire content. And hello once again to the Gulf Coast Sports and Entertainment Network. We are back for another edition of the Fox 8 Overtime Podcast. And we got some fire content today. Mr. Andre, it's Wednesday. I'm not okay. trying to rhyme. It's just coming. Okay. Um, and uh, it's been a, a crazy week because it's a condensed week because we just got back uh, Tuesday from the Monday night game. But I'm catching back up. How are you, sir? Man, Sean, it has been a long day. You mm. know, when the Saints have these short weeks, it really throws off our routines mm-hmm. and everything. Then with all the news today, they kind of pushed everything back. So, yeah, we've been working today. We've been working, and we got some news. Oh, and yeah. that is where we're going to go with the big picture today. Andre Johnson, Jr., please share with the folks what the big news is today. Head coach Dennis Allen didn't waste any time, Sean. At the very top of his press conference for the media today, he announced that with Derek Carr recovering from an oblique injury, the starting quarterback on Sunday against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers would be none other than than the rookie Spencer Rattler. Now, that came as a bit of a surprise because all season, Spencer Rattler's been on the inactive list as the emergency quarterback, Mm -hmm. while Jake Hayner was the one who would come in, and he was actually the one who came in on Monday after the loss against the Chiefs Mm -hmm. and played for Derek Carr. So I think a lot of people assumed it would be Hayner, but Dennis Allen surprising a lot of people, bringing in Rattler, how do you feel about the Rattler move, and how do you think that helps their chances with the Bucks coming in on I think Sunday? You see, I got a lot written down right here. <laughs> so uh, let's get through this. Um, all right, big picture. Rattler, Spencer Rattler, Jake Hayner. Jake Hayner, Spencer Rattler. Who should start on Sunday? Dennis Allen, as you said, I was there. Walk right into the podium. Didn't even take a, uh, a question, opening statement, left no debate about it. Walked into his press conference and definitively stated, we are going with Spencer Rattler as quarterback today. That gives us the best chance to win in this matchup for this week. All right. So, again, no guessing. You know, other coaches may try to keep you like, oh, well, who's in it? And you got to ask the players, and you got to do this, and you got to do that. You got to keep trying to draw some hands. You keep taxing your people. Who is playing? Who is playing? He just came right out and said it, and I, I really appreciate that. I really do. Let's yeah. let's just let's just let's just stop all the dumb uh, uh, the gamesmanship that I think coaches overthink. Okay, this is an interesting choice, but not totally surprising because Rattler's name was leaked very early in the report that uh, Derek Carr was going to miss a couple of weeks. The interesting part, as you mentioned, is simply this. Jake <clears throat> Hayner was Derek Carr's backup through five games this season. Clearly, the Saints trusted him more to execute Derek Carr's game plan if he were to exit in game in a game, which he did Monday night. We all saw it against Kansas City, which is why the Saints are in this predicament right now. But when it comes to or came to or will come to creating and operating a game plan without Derek Carr, and it's one or the other, Rattler or Hayner, they, I don't know if they lost faith or just have more faith and pointed to Spencer Rattler. Let me just say... I watched every single offseason practice, every single mini camp, rookie mini camp, and obviously I was there for the entirety of training camp, and I watched the preseason like a lot of y'all did. You didn't watch the other stuff that I did, but you watched the preseason like I did. Um, Rattler is the bigger name. He is the more popular player for all y'all out there. We see in the comments. <laughs> he is the more natural playmaker. This was a guy that was number one in the country for a long time, coming out of high school for a reason. Um, I believe... If you just score everything, Hayner had the better overall camp when you include practices and preseason, but Rattler was the better player with the higher upside. Five games into his career, were they ready to tap into the upside, or were they going to go with the guy that maybe was a little further along in just a classroom academic sort of, uh, that sounds bad, just, just the knowledge of the system, let's put it that way. Um that's why when I talked about on Fox 8 Overtime, the show, I said I was on the fence. And I had a whole thing read out about it still being on the fence because I wasn't expecting to have it that definitively stated to me by the head coach uh, that it was going with Spencer Rattler. So they are going to go with that 
Rattler and the upside and the playmaker and the natural instincts over the guy they trusted in game to execute. If you recall, back in 2020, mm. Peyton did something similar when Breeze went down. We all assumed Jameis Winston was the guy because he had come in a couple times in game. He was the in game backup to Drew Breeze, but Taysom Hill was the guy they turned to when they game planned separately. And he was the guy for four weeks when Breeze was out. He went three and one. But here's the big picture, the bigger picture. Can't even talk right now. But let me let me clear my words up. The bigger picture, mm. because I'm already starting to hear it, even from members of my own family. Okay. I know Rattler is the guy the majority of all you guys wanted to start. So you will get your wish on Sunday, and I hope he plays his best butt off and I hope he helps the team win and I hope uh, he proves the coach is right understand this though the game plan is going to be to take as much off of Rattler's plate as possible they're going to try to simplify the game run the football short safe passes half field reads and then maybe as the game progresses a few calculated shots here and there and of course Defense, 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 take the ball away to hopefully grind out a win. Or if it's not grinded out, just to do what you have to do to get a win because they're two and three. I think they're going to want to muddy this game up. And why wouldn't they? They got a rookie quarterback against a well old machine on that side of the ball uh, when they play offense and Baker Mayfield and those guys. I don't believe the game plan will be, could be wrong, guys, but I don't believe the game plan will be, hey, Let's just let the rookie go out there in his first start, throw caution to the wind, and just let it rip and make plays. Let's just do that. I just don't think that's going to be the game plan. This game, this team is 2-3 and three and desperately needs a win. If they were 5-0, and oh, maybe you could be a little more free. If they were 4-1, and one, maybe you could be a little more free. If you were 0-5, oh maybe you could be a little more free and let, just let, let him go do that. But I don't think that's the case. Dennis Allen was here. Back in 2019, the first time Breeze got hurt due to injury, when Teddy Bridgewater stepped in, went 5-0, and when Drew Breeze went down. If you remember those games, a few of those wins were pretty ugly, like 13-3. Yeah. I think there were two games where 12, they didn't score 10, a touchdown, if right. I remember correctly. I, I think that's what DA is kind of envisioning in this scenario. Now, you could say Spencer Rattler has more natural talent than Teddy Bridgewater, and I and I wouldn't argue that. I, would, I wouldn't disagree with that, but I, I just think... The goal is to win the game, not necessarily um, unleash this rookie. You know, you know what I'm saying? I just because I, I, I just think that's where their heads are at right now. Now, why do I bring this up? Because, like we said, there is a strong percentage of y'all watching, listening out there right now. You don't just be honest. You don't just want to see Rather start. Mm -hmm. In your mind, you want to see him permanently take over as QB one. Let's just be honest here, guys. Let's we 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 see the comments, we hear the comments, we hear we talk to people in the street. He's going to be so good in your mind that the Saints will have no choice but to turn the Rattler for the rest of the season, and Carl will get Drew Bledsoe. That's a verb. You saw that <laughs> Drew Bledsoe. Look, I'm not going to completely write off this scenario. I'm not because it's crazy possible. things happen all the time in the NFL, and more importantly, as we sit right here right now. We don't know how long the timeline is going to be for Derek Carr. I know Drew Brees back in 14. I remember being at the Greenbrier when he hurt his oblique. He said he kind of missed a couple of weeks and he came back. He said he wished he wouldn't have done that. I don't know if Derek Carr takes the same approach. And look, that scenario I just laid out, if somehow Carr got bled so, the only way that's going to happen is, is if somehow this injury lingered into like a seven or eight or nine week sort of absence and then Rattler takes over and blows up and then then your dream scenario may come to fruition but the organization hopes this car injury is a simple short-term issue they hope car will be back sooner rather than later even then allen said today when emphatically asked by jeff duncan if car would be the starter when he's returned he said yes Derek carr will be the starter when he comes back to throw any water on any controversy so here's why I finally, here's where I, my, my final conclusion here. Let's just say that Carr is out for two games, which I think is realistic. When you look at an oblique strain, I don't think it was going to require any surgery. It's the, it's the torque. If you can get the torque back, you got a, 
a Sunday game and the Thursday game. I think I think coming back before, for that Thursday game might be a little unrealistic. I think two game ma- uh, absence is realistic. The team wants someone that can get them at least one win, however that looks. So when number four is back, and hopefully some other guys, which is another thing we're going to get into, they can resume their plans as they hit the favorable portion of their schedule. And I put, use favorable in air quotes here because nothing is a guarantee when it comes to the NFL. So that's where I stand with the Rattler decision. Uh, in the present tense, it, does, it, it doesn't surprise me, and I can, I, I can certainly see their argument, and it makes sense. Um, but if you're already getting ahead of yourself long-term and all that, he's going to be the guy at QB1, I'd pump the brakes on that. You know, listening to Dennis Allen talk today, there was one thing he kept saying – and that Spencer Rattler gives us the best chance to win this week. Mm-hmm. He talked about how much he likes Spencer Rattler in this matchup. Mm-hmm. And when you really look at it, this is a good time for Rattler to come in and start. Mm-hmm. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, they're in total defense, mm-hmm. yards-wise, they rank 30th in the NFL. In pass defense, they rank 28th in the NFL. The Bucks' offense has been on fire. Baker Mayfield's probably mm-hmm. in the early MVP discussion. But their defense has left a lot to be yeah. desired in Tampa so far. Speaking of Tampa, you got to bring up the fact that right now as we speak, Hurricane Milton is hitting that city. Mm-hmm. Because of that, Tampa came in yesterday and they've been practicing at Tulane. They brought all their families and they're trying to work in a, you know, a different environment. Mm-hmm. And their entire routine, their entire work week thrown off. is thrown off. That routine, athletes are, routine, are uh, creatures of habit. And all of their habits that they build out throughout game week coming into a big divisional matchup, they're all thrown off right now because of Hurricane Milton. That may have some kind of uh, mental effect on the team as well. Then you got to count in the fact that this is not Atlanta on the road. This isn't Kansas City on the road. He's playing at home. Mm -hmm. And he's going to play at home in a dome that's going to be packed with Saints fans, a lot of which want to see him play. I mean, my group message, my fantasy football group message has been blowing up all day. They've been saying, who that? Rat that? Which I think they could do better. I (laughs) I think we could find a better saying. But regardless, the Saints fandom is very excited to see Rattler come in and play. And then you talked about beyond this week, they've got some winnable games. After this week, you've got the Chargers, Mm -hmm. you've got the Carolina Panthers, and you've got the well, Cleveland well, Browns. Don't miss the Broncos on Thursday. Uh, yeah, yeah. And then the yeah. Broncos on Thursday. Yeah, you got the Broncos on Thursday, the Chargers, the Panthers, and the Browns as your next four. So coming out of this game, assuming he keeps that job, those are four very winnable games for Spencer Rattler. So I think that, you know, we've talked about Rattler versus Hannah. We talked about it a lot in the uh, training camp part of the offseason season. And it really comes down to floor versus ceiling. Mm -hmm. I think Jake Hayner has the floor. He's reliable. You can trust him not to go out and lose the game. But with this offensive line, how it is right now, with this team on a three-game winning streak, hoping to avoid their first four-game winning streak since, I believe, 2000 or 21, 21, when they lost five in a row, Mm -hmm. you don't need a guy, at least in their minds, who won't lose you the game. You need a guy who's going to go out there and win you the game. And Dennis Allen said it. Multiple times today, he believes that Spencer Rattler's that guy. Yeah, I mean, look, then that's that's really where it all boils down to. It's this matchup, this game, where they currently are. It would have been very interesting to see had Carr not gotten hurt, would Spencer would have been inactive again this week, or has he bumped Carr to be the backup? And when Carr comes back and he assumes he start assumes the starting role again. Is Rattler now the two, the game day two, and, and Hayner is now the inactive three? So it really it presented an interesting scenario. And I, I don't know what what criteria you look at that would be different for we like this guy better in-game versus we like this better game planning with him. I understand there's a little bit difference there, but it just it, it almost feels like you would you would assume the guy that you were game planning. Uh, that that was you were trusting to handle the game plan week to week, even though he was the backup, would be the guy when you when you you know don't have that starter and he just kind of rises up, but that's not the case. And like I said, Peyton did the same thing uh, with Taysom Hill and Jameis Winston back in 2020. So, all that being said, it's a risk either way. Yeah. Let, let's not let's not discount that. This is a risk either way. Tampa Bay's playing some really good football. They shouldn't have lost to Atlanta. They're coming off of a. Thursday games, they're coming off their mini-buy. The Saints have a short week, and I was out there today. It was a walkthrough. 
but you could tell like that team's just starting to recover a little bit. And it's 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 late thir- it's late Wednesday night now, so you only got a few more days to get back and get ready to go. And you're going to start a rookie quarterback. You're going to start a first time starter regardless if it was a rookie or uh, or it was Hainer the second year guy. So this is a risk um, for both guys. Um, there's solid arguments to be made for both players, and I I, I can't disagree uh, totally with their uh, with their thought process when it comes to Spencer Rattler because. As I've repeatedly stated, I do feel like he's got the higher upside. I do think he's a little bit of the uh, more natural, instinctive playmaker. When you watch him throw, it, it seems a little smoother. Uh, he's got a strong arm. Um, I felt like actual play-to-play execution, I felt like Hayner was the guy throughout camp. and uh, I would give the nod to, to Rattler during the, the the entirety of the preseason, but none, none really just... just Took and you know said I'm the one, guy. That one throw uh, down the sideline, I believe it was to Equinemia St. Brown for the touchdown. Yeah, that was a dime. Yeah, that was a that was an absolute dime. Um, so I can't argue with uh, the the rationale because it's it's not an easy uh, decision to make when you have to turn to a backup quarterback. And you know, last year this is the bigger thing that I wanted to talk about. Not bigger, but this is a different aspect that I want to talk about. We all assumed Carr was going to play because last year there were. Three games he got knocked out of that I thought he had no shot at playing the next week. Yep. Like, and every single time it was more physically grueling uh, injuries. It felt like there's no way this. I mean, I remember when he got knocked out of the Detroit game. I, I went to practice the next Wednesday to see, and there he was. I'm like, this guy never misses a game, and he never talked after any of those games. He ex- exited early, and the three games he left last year. This game he spoke. So I was like, okay, well, this is this is probably just something minor, and he'll be back. But this is the one that actually is going to knock him out of his first game as Saints quarterback. Right, and, you know, with the guy filling in for him, the question a lot of people may ask is, how much of a hold does he have on this job, at least in the short term? You know, one thing Dennis Allen also said today is he wants him – to feel the freedom to go out and does do what he does. He wants to let him play. Mm-hmm. He doesn't want Rattler worried about, oh, if I make a mistake, he's going to bench me. So I don't expect to see Jake Hayner Sunday against the Bucks because mm-hmm. I really do think they'll give him a lot of rope and a lot of freedom to yeah, go out absolutely. there and make plays and make mistakes. But let's say hypothetically that game ends – 33 to 6 Tampa Bay. Yeah. Does Rattler have the freedom to come back next week or is it okay we've seen what we have with Rattler? We've got a short week. Maybe we give Hayner a try coming in mm-hmm. on Thursday against Sean Payton and the Denver Broncos. And so Vance Joseph, yeah, they're the coordinator. Yeah, exactly. So we talked about uh, after training camp. This was a continuous contest. This wasn't something that neither guy took in the preseason and was like, "Hey, this is my job. I'm QB2." They gave it to Jake Hayner, but it's not like Jake Hayner, obviously he didn't take it by a wide margin because when Derek Carr got hurt, Rattler came in, and D.A. said it was actually the scout team reps Mm -hmm. from Spencer Rattler that impressed them enough to give him this position. Now he's got to go out there and show that he needs to keep it, at least while Derek Carr is gone. Yeah, but how? Why wouldn't you just make him the two during the season? Right. Like, like, I mean, that's why why would you just make, like, like Jeff Duncan said something today. You know, maybe this is a little bit of desperation, like, Okay, we don't really have the luxury of kind of figuring this out. Let's just go with the better player, and that's what they're doing here. Because like, first they didn't they didn't think they'd be presented with this scenario, but like if if he's really been that impressive in scout team, just make him the guy. Like why? Like if it, 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 it would stand the reason that that would make give yourself a better chance if Carr goes down, say middle of the first quarter in a game, to have that guy in there. But look, I. I would love to know how close it really was, how intense the discussion was. Because sometimes when you come out with that clear, confident tone, you're trying to send the message that, you know, we're here, we're going to do this. But maybe that's also a sign that this was a debate back and forth. And maybe yeah. we we don't want to come across all wishy-washy, but no, we, we took some time discussing this because um, it, if Carr, if Rattler is the guy, there's a reasonable ask of, well, is why wasn't he? Why wasn't he the guy the first five weeks of the season? And if Hayner was the guy the first five five, five weeks of the season, why isn't he the guy now? Because in the Taysom scenario I drew up, Taysom was playing. Yeah, Taysom was playing, so that made sense to have Winston as the in game uh, backup. So look, I hope it works out for him because more than anything else, this team needs to win. They have got to win four straight losses after the two 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 wins they opened the season. 
I think would have would just be devastating for this team. They've got to get to three and three because if they slip to two and four, it's going to be a tough road ahead. Absolutely. And I talked about all the reasons why this is a good week for him to start, but we've got to get to today's injury report. Yeah. And those may be a few reasons why mm-hmm. it'll be a bit of an uphill battle in some ways as well for Spencer Rattler. This was just a walkthrough today. So mm-hmm. in that walkthrough, there were nine guys who did not practice. Taysom Hill with a rib injury. Cesar Ruiz with a knee injury. On the defensive side, Peyton Turner with a knee injury. Back to offense, Alvin Kamara with a hip injury and a hand injury. Mm. Last few weeks, AK has been on the injury report with a hip injury and a ribs injury. The ribs are gone. Now it's a hand injury. Obviously, Derek Carr with that oblique injury did not practice today. Lucas Patrick, the offensive lineman, did not practice today. Rashid Shaheed with a hip injury, Mm. non-participant at practice today. And back on the defensive side, safety Will Harris and linebacker Pete Werner did not practice today. But if you want a little bit of good news after all of those DNPs. That's nine. Nine. Counting nine. Nine guys. But one guy practiced limited. That's Willie Gay Jr. And one guy practiced in full. We thought he'd come back next. Last week he didn't. But Kendra Miller is expected to make his return. The running back, second year guy, is expected to finally line up for the Saints this season. But you can't forget about the nine guys who didn't practice today. Maybe it was just because it was a walkthrough and they wanted to give those guys a bit of a rest on a short week, but if those are legitimate injury concerns, that could make it a little tough on the rookie. Yeah, and honestly, like we talked about it on the show, game plan show, like it really boils down to the offensive line, and the key is to have the same offensive line from start to finish in your practice week. That seems to be the key because – I mean, when they had to, if a guy leaves mid game, that's obviously an issue. And if you can't practice with the same starting five all week, that's also an issue. Because the one time they did that in the last three game losing streak was against Atlanta, and the O line played well. Yeah. So that's the key. Last week they got injured in practice, a couple guys. And, you know, DA was asked about injuries today, about just the magnitude. Are you looking into what could potentially be an issue? He said, yeah. And rightfully so. I mean, I'm usually not, I'm usually one of those guys that's like, look, it'll all even out. But this is becoming a major issue. And look, I'm usually one that, because I don't want to ever point to injuries as a reason why you lose. But then when I went back and rewatched that game against the Chiefs, I'm like, my God, they're banged up. I mean, even the guys that are out there healthy, aren't healthy like yeah. some of the guys that were coming back from injury they were not clearly themselves so this is a major trying time here for the saints and i mean it's it's it, it's your lifeline you got to have health for your players to do anything close to what you want to do and i think it's tripping up the offense right now because offensively you had 47 points 42 points on one end and you had 13 and 12 on the other end, and two losses. And two wins, you had over 40. And two losses, you had uh, uh, under 14. And then you had you know, the one game where you scored, uh, what, 20, 23 or 24, probably could have had 31 in that game uh, against Atlanta. So you're talking about some swings here. I think it's really throwing off the rhythm of this play caller, the rhythm of this team. And I'll go back to it. It sure would be nice to have old number seven out there. Oh, yeah. I'm not even sure if seven was available, if they wouldn't have turned to him uh, in this scenario, because that's. He is the least risky one of all of them, in my yep. opinion. But I think not having him is throw Clint Kubiak off so much because you could just tell when he is in the game how much more comfortable Clint Kubiak feels as a play caller. And how much af- more effective the running game yeah. is. And for the first time really all season, because they have done a relatively good job at being able to run the ball. But against Kansas City on Monday, we saw what this offense looks like if you are not able to establish the run. If you can't establish the run... The pass doesn't work. They were able to get the deep shot to Rashid Shahid, But outside of that, the offense was pretty pedestrian the entire game. And they they never got in any rhythm. And you could just tell what they have to do to get this offense going. And uh, Monday night looked like a game from last year. Like, that was very static. There wasn't a whole – I mean, it was motion. But uh, they they couldn't run the ball to the edge. Um, And you can't do that. There was no play action. They had four play actions. I mean, this is is a play action offense. You have to run play action – for this offense to work and for the play action to work, you got to run the ball. And to run the ball, what has to work? Well, the offensive line and tight ends have to be in cohesion to block for uh, the running back. So it just led to a really ugly game where it just felt like that game was over by the first <laughs> by the by the first interception thrown uh, at the end of the game. Uh, it felt like that game had really sort of uh, already fallen out of control. Right, and those are a lot of the things they're going to have to get fixed because I don't think that. 
Maybe he does. I'm not expecting Spencer Rattler to come out and throw for 404 touchdowns. You are going to have to give that rookie some support. Alvin Kamara is going to have to be able to get that ground game going. You're probably not going to have Taysom to supplement that. So AK, maybe a little bit of Kendra. They probably limited snaps, I'd expect, in this first week back. Mix Jamal Williams in there. That running game is going to have to get going. That defense that really couldn't touch Mahomes. Come on back. Come on. Come on yeah, back to me, man. Come on back. You're not going to be able to let Baker Mayfield score 27, 30 points and expect to win that game. That defense is going to have to step up. They're going to have to pressure Baker Mayfield because when he walked into the Dome last year, I was on Dominated. the field shooting that one, and he was doing whatever he wanted back then. Whatever he wanted. Real quick, how, how insane do you think the fan base is going to go in, in, inside the Dome when Rattler throws a touchdown? Oh, my goodness. It might be <laughs> one of the loudest <laughs> cheers you've ever seen. You know how the Apple Watches tell you, yeah. hey, uh, you're in a bit of a loud environment. I think we're going to get one of those notifications on our Apple Watches if Rattler throws a – don't let it be a long touchdown. Oh, my goodness. Whew. If it's a long touchdown, whoo. One of those bombs to Rashid Shahid. But you know what? If hey. it happens, hey, it helps him win. That's all that matters. And before we go, Sean, let's let them know. Don't forget to send your questions in. You can send questions in to us on the Final Play app. Go to the Final Word feature on the little drop-down menu on the side, and you can send questions to us. We look at them every day. A lot of times, Sean and I will get on here on the podcast, and we'll answer some of your questions. And, of course, every Monday night at 1035, Juan Kincaid, Sean Fazan, and Saints Hall of Famer, Saints legend, Deuce McAllister will come through and answer a lot of your questions. And right now, I know Saints fans have a lot of questions, whether it's about Spencer Rattler starting, Jake Hayner not getting the nod, the defense, guys being injured. I saw one today that said, hey, maybe you guys should go get Devin White, an LSU legend, part of that championship team, if I remember correctly, who was recently cut by the Philadelphia Eagles. We'll see if he winds up finding his way back to the boot. We are out of time here so, so far. For Andre Johnson Jr., I'm Sean Fazan. We'll catch you guys next time on Overtime.